<laughs> and, and so what I'd like for you to do is just pick the guitar up and, and play whatever you want behind what, what I do, if you would. And, and I have a little bit of an idea of where I want to go, and, and whatever you do, we'll just have, have whatever we have, okay? So, um, thank you. Thank you. The U.S. right now has a current poet laureate named Charles Wright. And he inspired me with a long poem called Lonesome Pine Special. And it's all about landscapes and how we travel from one place to the next. In this room tonight, everybody's traveled somewhere. This is a land of travelers here in Paris, and this is a room of travelers and a room of musicians. And I love the jazz most of all, and those chords are great, man. <laughs> so Charles Wright, in this poem called Lonesome Pine Special, takes, takes you from one landscape to another, internally and externally. And he does it around America. I'll give you a little sampling of Charles Wright, and then I'll move into a couple of my pieces, and then we'll move into some other things and finish it out with maybe a little bit more Charles Wright. So here's the question that he asked in his poem, Lonesome Pine Special. What is it inside your imagination that keeps surprising you at odd moments when something is given back that you didn't know you had had in solitude, spontaneously, and with great joy? What is it inside your imagination, Jason, that keeps surprising you at odd moments? And you too, and you, and you, and all of you, at odd moments when something is given back. Give us a few chords. Something is given back that you didn't know you had had in solitude, spontaneously, and with great joy. Charles Wright goes on to open that poem by saying, there's a curve in the road and a slow curve in the land outside of Barbaraville, Kentucky on US 25E. I've always liked each time I've passed it. It's a bottom land, it's a river against a ridge to the west, few farmhouses on each side of the road, some mailboxes next to a dirt lane that leads off through the fields each time I think how pleasant it must be to live here. Let's move to Taos, New Mexico for a moment. This is one that I wrote. Keep moving, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some guy walks along, picks up the guitar, and you're like, my God. <laughs> Just south of Taos this morning, on my way to Santa Fe, a road sign warned Bighorn Sheep. I scanned the land for wildlife. Nothing moved but my Mini Cooper, gliding 60 miles an hour, sunroof pushed back, window down, scent of sage in the air, Spanish music on the radio, I downshifted for the curves and started thinking about the first time I heard Janis Joplin sing me and Bobby McGee. You know, I always thought when Janis said she let him slip away, that she meant he left her for another woman. Or he hoboed to Seattle because he loved the rails more than he loved her. That's your story, right? Loved the rails more than he loved her. Or he just plain turned mean and robbed a bank. Do you know what? I now know the truth. Bobby died. And Bobby did it in the arms of a woman that loved him. And that's a sweet, sad story when you think about it. An hour after I got to Santa Fe, I watched a young married couple order sandwiches at the Aztec Cafe. They touched each other while they waited. The air was clean and dry. A few
few white clouds floated in the egg blue sky. Continuing on now, traveling in America, moving toward where we are tonight. I'll do one more of mine. This is a road piece on the road a little bit. June 1970, while draft boards were shipping men, young men like me to Vietnam, I hitchhiked west on I-40. 18 wheelers downshifted for the grade, giving me hope I'd catch a ride all the way to Colorado, far past a few exits down where I could have been working the graveyard shift in Champion Paper. Even to this day, folks who pull time down there at that paper company claim the smoke that rises out of the stacks late at night and settles on the meadow in the morning it smells like money. I had a hundred in my jeans and a thumb pointed west, hungry for strangers. The thumb, like Route 66 and old T-Birds, is a powerful symbol in the American psyche. But it's the eye that catches the ride. Wayne, a military intelligence officer who blow, drove a Pontiac Le Mans with a loaded 38 pistol in the glove box. I didn't bring the gun, but he had one, Jason. Loaded 38 pistol in the glove box. It gave me a ride all the way to East St. Louis. Across the Mississippi, muddy with barges. Missouri hardwoods. Surrender to Kansas wheat on the gradual incline to the Rockies. The next morning in Denver, after bacon and eggs in the Waffle House, I walked into an Army Navy store. I kicked open a footlocker full of bayonets. I reached in, stacked like ribs those bayonets, reached in, pulled one out, held it in my hand. I stabbed the air once, I stabbed the air twice, and on the third strike, the air became the enemy. Knife through black silk like soft butter. Eyes widened, his knees shook, M16s rattled in the mist off the river, and then like steam exploding, he vanished while the cashier was making change for an old American flag, I decided I was not going to fight that goddamn war.